Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how to use Soul Reflections, my new 3D lighting product that's just come out, and I'm excited to share it with you today. So the idea behind it is I kept playing around with the eye reflections that I've been talking about in my last two videos, and there's a lot of community interaction, and I, I thought that was very exciting. So I played around with the idea of eye reflections so much that I thought, hey, I'm going to put a whole product together. And, um, and this is it, and this is how you use it. So here's the mad professor's thoughts as to, you know, this is what, what this is how it's meant to be used. Let's take a look at it. It's uh, only available for Das Studio for the iRay rendering engine right now. And this is what it looks like once it's installed. So it comes up in the content library tab and uh, either in your Das 3D library under light presets if you've installed it there, or in my case, I've actually installed it into a separate runtime library, which is just uh, Soul Reflections. And there it also comes up in light presets. There it is. And we can see the moment you go in, you, you see four little shortcuts here. I'm going to talk about more of that later here. So headlamp on and off and IBL on and off. Under that, we have four folders. So we have bulge settings, which again, those are kind of shortcuts that you can dial in. And then we have the three main folders, which is close up, medium and wide. And what those three folders are, they will bring in cameras with parented 2D shapes and if you hover over them you get a larger preview over what these shapes look like and each of these shapes they sit just behind the camera and they emit light and if that's close enough to the character then those shapes will reflect in your character's eyes. I'm going to show you how to use that in a moment. Bulge settings is something that, depending if your character supports it, will bulge the cornea of the character more or less. I'm going to give you three shortcuts for each character that supports it. So Genesis 1, Genesis 2 female, Genesis 2 male didn't have that setting. Genesis 3 male and female and Genesis 8, of course. The, these, these settings for Genesis 8, they're there for both male and female characters. It kind of uses the same um, setting there and uh, there's the zero 150 percent so you can try out if that enhances the effect that you're after so no obligation of course let's start with the close-up here they're all technically the same thing but the settings for how much emission comes out of each 2d shape is going to be a little bit different that's why i give you the same thing in close-up medium and wide shots Let's bring in the cache flash close here, double click on that, and then you'll see what happens here. So we can see that these three cache dollar signs have now been brought in. And if you spin around, you can see how that setup works. So we have the camera and to it parented is this 2D shape, and that's a light emitting shape. If you open the cash flash camera you can see the dollar sign here and that's the 2d shape uh, that's parented to the camera so when i move the camera back and forth then the light prop will also move back and forth and this this has implications i'm going to talk to you about that later too so what you can do now is you can switch your perspective view over to the cash flash camera and then we'll see kind of a dark picture not exactly what we want and i did this because i switched off the headlamp camera by default. To see that better, let's head over to the Soul Reflections main folder and with the camera selected in the scene tab, uh, double click the headlamp on shortcut and that'll switch our headlamp on. So now we can see our character, we can pose the close up a little bit better. Avoid zooming in and out at this point because if you do that, it'll change the light intensity that the 2D light prop has. So just pan for now, either with this icon or with a shortcut here, and see how that works for you. We're going to give our character a little bit of an expression. This is Ethel, by the way, by Fred Winkler. And with her head selected, let's head over to the parameters tab under pose controls. I'm sure we're going to find an expression. So if it's dollar signs and perhaps she's, uh, she's just got a cracked jackpot in Vegas. So let's give her some excitement and perhaps some happiness. Uh, that, should, that should kind of convey what we're trying to tell in the story here. That should do it. Again, once again, with the camera selected, if you want to see the real result, head over back to the Soul Reflections shortcuts and switch off the camera's headlamp because otherwise that will interfere with the actual outcome. 
Speaking of shortcuts, there's also shortcuts to switch on and off the IBL. Now, if you start a brand new scene in Das Studio, it'll always come up with the IBL intact and in place. And what this uh, shortcut does, it can switch it on and off for you. So this is equivalent to heading over to your render settings into the environment tab and switching the environment map to zero. That's exactly what that shortcut does. It doesn't touch any of the other rendering settings. It just does this. And uh, I, I find myself switching that off quite a lot. So if I do that and we can have a look at the environment map, it's now set to zero. That's exactly what that does. And if you want to render with IBL, you can easily switch that back on again. So with all that in place, let's just switch over to the iRay viewport here and we'll see what our preview looks like. There we go, it takes a little bit of time for us to actually see the reflections clearly, but you can see what's going on here. So we have a kind of a flash from the front and uh, it doesn't give us much shadow from the left or the right, but this is kind of set up so that it'll work with the intensity on the close up. If you're not quite happy with that, and if you want that to be either lighter or darker, then you can select the 2D shape prop here, in our case it's a dollar sign, and head over to the surfaces tab under the editor tab here, open that thing up here until you find that dollar flash or whatever 2D shape surface you find. Under the emissions option, you see the bottom slider here, the luminous efficacy, and currently that's set to 30. And that's because I've set this to luminance units, it's, it's currently set to watts. So 30 is what produces this result. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see if we can rotate that. Uh, currently it's not quite written over her eyes, it's kind of rotated this way, and we wanna, we wanna really rotate that so that it's kind of in line with her eyes. We're gonna do that in a moment, and we're gonna point the eyes as well. We're gonna do that in a moment. So right now, if I wanted to make this brighter I'll just I'll just type in a different value here maybe say 40 and then that should you know brighten things up a little bit or if that's too bright for you then you know try something less try maybe 20 and see if that floats your boat I'm mentioning this here and I'm just going to go back to the default value which was 30 I'm mentioning this here because if you zoom in and out with any of your cameras then you'll notice that the doing so will also mean it'll remove it'll move the light source away from your subject and as a result moving it away decreases the light output whereas moving closer in will increase the light output so your camera zooming or let's say the dollying action has a direct influence on what happens to the light intensity so if you do that if you do adjust shots then you know head over to the emissions tab and tweak it here but that's why i've given you these other shortcuts here so if you're uh, if you don't want a complete close-up like this bring in the camera from the medium tab or from the wide shot tab and that'll have the camera with the proper light value attached already set up so that you can you know get started quickly with with your work Let's have a look at how we can tweak the dollar sign so that they're kind of more in line with her eyes. I think I'm going to switch this over into my side-by-side -side viewports here so that I can see my rendered version on the left-hand side and then I've got a perspective view that's not rendered in IRA on the right-hand side. And let's see what happens if I just select the dollar sign here, perhaps zoom in a little bit, and just turn the sign over. Make sure that when you do this, you're in this sign's local coordinates. So you can do that under the tool settings tab. And there's this thing here, use local coordinates. If you do that, if you switch that to world coordinates, then you see that the 3D manipulator kind of uh, spins around and it will be difficult to rotate the sign literally around its, I believe it's its Y axis or X axis, I always forget, the, the, the thing in the middle that, you know. Anyway, switch this thing over to the local coordinates and now you've got a better way of rotating it so with this thing selected you can now just turn it this way and i'll see what the outcome is here perhaps a little bit more i can just about see that the the, the dollar signs then just need to be rotated a little bit more and then i'm going to go over and s switch that to the single viewport again see what that has the effect that i wanted you can do the same thing by heading over to the parameters tab and then using the Y rotation to achieve the same effect if you want to tweak it with numeric values that's also possible. 
Once you've got the 2D shape rotated and positioned and your camera adjusted the way you just want it, you can point the eyes directly at the camera. So right now she's kind of looking off camera, but if I wanted her to look directly at the camera, I can select each eye with a right click here and head over to the parameters tab under MISC. You can point that eye directly at the cache flash camera, or you can even point it at the dollar sign. Let's try the camera first and apparently nothing seems to happen, but it's because there's a tiny little bug in Dash Studio that doesn't show this thing up instantly. And what we have to do, sadly, is with the camera selected, we just have to move the camera a little bit. And just a tiny bit means the eyes, once they're pointed, will pop into position just like this. So that's the result. So now what I can do is no matter what I do with my camera, the eyes will always point directly at my camera. And that's going to be, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of cool depending on what, what shot you want to frame in there. So she's always going to look at you and have these cache signs in her eyes. And that's one way of doing it. Another idea is if you wanted the character to look off camera, but you're not quite sure how you need to turn the eyes. So you can either turn the eyes with parameters, with numeric values, or you could just, uh, if I just point her, if I just twist her head slightly over here again, She's now still going to look at the camera, but if I wanted her to look off camera, I can again select the eyes and under MISC, I can now point the eyes not at the camera, but at the dollar sign. So that's another possibility. Do that here and do that with the other eye as well. And then this is another funky trick I wanted to show you. If you do that, and once again, I'm going to go and switches over into the side-by-side -side viewport here. If I now select my dollar sign again from my slightly overcrowded scene over here, then I can go and move the dollar sign slightly off camera. So with this little white thing, I can leave the, leave the dollar sign in the plane it is currently in. Just make sure that it isn't going to obscure the camera's viewport but as soon as you do that you can see that her eyes are now following the dollar sign and that means wherever you point the dollar sign this is what she's going to be looking at so this is something it's just another trick to keep in mind that if you wanted to experiment a little bit you can even turn the sign a little bit into the x direction and then just play around with this this is something else that you can explore and and see if that's um, if that's something that gives your images just that look that you're looking for i did this with the main promo render this is exactly how i did this effect uh, this is the kathy character here that i've used and she's kind of looking slightly off camera and that's how i've created that that boom flash in her eyes and just to show you what the difference is between the close-up, medium and wide shots here, if I leave this camera in place, let me just switch the iRay engine off here quickly and head over to the perspective view and zoom out a little bit. So this is now the, the close-up camera. If I wanted to bring in a wide camera, for example, and uh, let's just use the hard camera, then you can see what happens here. The difference is that the light prop itself is much larger in comparison to the other props. So that's much, much smaller, but also closer to the character. So on the wide and medium shots, the prop itself is larger, yet further away, and the intensity is increased on the emissions tab. Again, it's, it's just a shortcut to get you started and just to show you where the medium is for the boom flash the medium is literally just in the middle there between the two that was it for now i hope this was helpful if you have any questions about the products then please leave a comment down below in the youtube comments you can also drop me a site mail on renderosity but the thing is uh, if you leave a comment then others can participate in our discussion so if they have the same question then you know we can we can answer all this together the product is currently available from Renderosity. There's a 30% off sale until the 1st of November, like a launch sale, which is very exciting. But check it out. You can also grab this copy as a freebie if you support me from as little as $1 a month on my
my Patreon campaign. And the thing is that I can see so much potential for this product that we haven't even explored what happens with other shapes or textures yet. Biscuits and I are working on a way of perhaps making this product available inside Poser. So, you know, very exciting things happening there. Again, lots of potential. So hence, this is called volume one and there may be, you know, the future may hold volume two, three, four, five, six, who knows? But you know, that's, that's all gonna be in the future. If you support me on Patreon, you'll be the first to know any future developments. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon for more Das Studio, Schnickschnack and shenanigans. Take care, bye-bye.